Well, earlier I was joined by Mark Shank. He's a director of foreign policy at the Friends Committee on National Legislation, and he discussed how Boeing has been getting away with this for so long. Well, Boeing's been getting away with it because every other company prior, every other defense contractor has been doing it, whether it was AECOM, KBR, Anham in Iraq, charging $4,000 for a circuit breaker that would cost on the market, normal market, you buy it for 200 bucks, they're charging 4000 So it is standard protocol within the defense contractor industry to overbill. Sometimes we find out about it, sometimes we don't. Even the Pentagon itself hasn't done an audit on all financial expenditures. They don't claim to do an audit or to be able to even do an audit until 2017. So in terms of taxpayer dollars, it puts the IRS conference scandal um, in stark perspective because that's peanuts compared to the kind of the millions that we're talking about here. So you're saying this isn't an isolated incident. My question to you is why is it taking the Pentagon so long to, to notice these problems? Do they just simply not care about this, these nickels and dimes as, as it could be described? So a couple reasons. One, they haven't subscribed to an audit. They need to. They're only one of two departments in the administration that haven't done an audit. The other is Department of Homeland Security. Second, in a war zone it's very easy to profiteer off of war. Um, just take several examples. You cited the OIG, Office of Inspector General. Even staff sergeants at the very, very base level, junior level military, bringing back millions of dollars in DVD recording uh, the facility, um, tens of thousands of dollars in teddy bears, uh, $100,000 in backpacks. The only reason we're finding out about it is either because of the Special, Inge Special Inspector General for Iraq Reconstruction, Stuart Bowen, or Special Inspector General, it's a mouthful, for Afghanistan Reconstruction, John Sopko. The problem with SIGAR and SIGIR, that's the acronym for both, is that their mandates are short. They end essentially even before the war ends. We don't have a permanent office for a special inspector general for overseas contingency operations, that's what wars are called, where we can monitor and do oversight over American taxpayer dollars. Otherwise, we're only going to continue to see more Boeings, more AECOMs, more KBRs, more ANHAMs where they're charging, overbilling the government, or staff sergeants where they're putting a million dollars in DVD recorders, $10,000 in uh, you know a teddy bear, or $100,000 in backpack. This is a serious problem. It's a serious waste, fraud, abuse, corruption, kickback scheme problem, and the American taxpayers need to know that. Is there any indication of exactly how much money uh, of the Pentagon's budget we're wasting? So if you look at Joe Stiglitz's work or Linda Bilm's work when they're talking about four to six trillion dollars spent on Iraq and Afghanistan, Pentagon would say we've spent 1.4 trillion. It's actually four to six if you count in veterans benefits and things like that. I would say 80 cents on a dollar comes back to the U.S. or to foreign contractors. We're leaving little infrastructure in place. Sigir under Stuart Bowen, Special Inspector General for Iraq Reconstruction, essentially finished his report this year saying we've left nothing in the country. No wonder they're in, engaged in violence because our the infrastructure we left, it pales in comparison to what they had pre-invasion. Pre so we need permanent capacities independent of the Pentagon because keep in mind the SIGAR and SIGIR are within the Pentagon wall. So it's kind of like um, keeping uh, your, your colleagues accountable is very difficult to do unless you have independent oversight. Um, so until we have a permanent office for overseas contingency operations to provide real oversight, we'll see more of these Boeing examples. Now, one of the offices that you mentioned that is part of this oversight is the SIGAR, that's the Afghanistan um, uh, faction of that. Now, today SIGAR released an alert letter warning the state, DOD, and USAID of serious problems involving failures in prime contractors to pay subcontractors in Afghanistan. Now, the reason that they say that this is a problem is because it puts at risk the entire mission in Afghanistan because it means that we could be losing um, support with the Afghanistan people. It could also delay or end many of those projects, those reconstruction projects that we've been spending millions and billions of dollars on. So can you talk about this just a little bit? Yep. Two points. First, to John Sopko, I met with him when I was a congressional staffer on the Hill. He's doing a better job than his predecessor, Arnie Fields, who um, several members of Congress called for the firing of because he just wasn't doing good investigation. So we're finally doing better investigation within SIGAR. And, and Stuart Bowen at SIGAR is leading the way. But in terms of what the Afghan people or the Iraqi people are seeing, they're seeing development that's done primarily by foreign contractors, whether it's Comonix or AEI or, or SEIC or DAI, who are doing it behind the wire under heavy security. And so the Afghan people aren't seeing their schools reconstructed in a meaningful way or their roads rebuilt. Uh, and even so, if they are, they're done under wire, under security, so they're not using them because the Taliban might hit them. The real approach to development is local level. And we have just a very short amount of time left, yep. but can you tell me very quickly, what's the solution here? Yep. So we need to make these oversight capabilities permanent. 
Uh, so merging the cigar and cigar into a permanent office where we do oversight. But I think long term, the way we reconstruct these countries, it has to be done at the local level with local oversight, local leadership. That's the only way we're going to provide stability and reconstruction in these countries. So get the people involved in yeah. order to create the country that they want to live in. Exactly. Michael Shank, Director of Foreign Policy at the Friends Committee on National Legislation. Thank you so much for coming Thanks, in, man. sir.